on the Mara River front. Migration is a strange phenomenon. There is neither a start or finish to the endless search for water and food. It's a relentless cycle of life and death as they circle the Serengeti and the Mara areas. Many carcasses of dead wild beast. They're already gathering on the banks. When the population builds up, they'll be crossing again. Where they cross next is anybody's guess. It's a dynamic process which defies predictions. Eventually they choose a crossing point, something that varies year to year and can't be predicted with accuracy. But usually the chosen point will be a fairly placid stretch of water without too much predator concealing vegetation on the far side. Although occasionally they will choose seemingly suicidal places and drown in their hundreds. Perhaps this is because the crossing places are genetically imprinted in the minds of the animals. They don't seem to be in a big hurry. Shifting on a whim in response to factors far beyond our knowledge, wildebeest have an inherent instinct to trek in a certain direction at any cost despite their terror. A newborn wildebeest gains coordination faster than any other hoofed animal. It's usually on its feet two to three minutes after birth and can run with the herd at the age of a whole five minutes. And it's unbelievably able to outrun a predator like a lion soon thereafter. Many calves get separated from their mothers with the herds across the river. The calves can then wander for days looking for their mom bleeding and bawling incessantly. Maybe they'll be lucky and find her, but no wildebeest cow will adopt a strange cow, even if she has lost her own calf and is lactating at the time. As the calf weakens, he is a victim for any predator, whether a jackal, hyena or a lion. These tragedies may appear to be a disaster for the wildebeest, but it represents a handful of the hundreds of thousands of calves born each year. Without an amount of natural mortality, the Willoughby's population could spiral out of control in no time. Wildebeest arrive at the Mara River in the tens of thousands and gather waiting to cross. For days their numbers could be building up and anticipation grows many times. For no clear reason, they turn and wander away from the water's edge. Moving to a new position. Hold on to your hats and especially hold on to your cameras. Get ready for some good bouncing. Luckily, I've always liked a good roller coaster. I'm just catching as catch can because I don't want to miss a thing. Let them do the maneuvering. Our compadres were lucky to position themselves in a good spot for views of this crossing. You never know what's really in the luck of the draw. Our guide Simon is trying his hardest to get us in a good position. You really are on the edge of your seat.
you can see how exhausted they are. Swimming amongst a sea of other exhausted bodies cannot be too encouraging. Still, they keep coming. I think that bird's living the easy life, even in the middle of all this cacophony. See how they're congregating here on the side now? Thank you. Oh my The hippo? Oh my god, you know what? The sun is a monster. See what I'm talking about? The monster is going to be taken. Yeah, it's going to be taken. Oh, come on, baby. Shit. It's going to be taken. Oh, the hippo. Will I make it? Will I make it? Look at my crop. There's a crop. It's funny. Yeah, it's not going to be funny. I 
Da kann man wohl wieder hinkommen. Ja, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, you made it. Holy cow. Mm. Yeah, you made it. Yeah. We were rooting for you. You're probably in a state of shock, huh? There you go. There you go. Woo-hoo-hoo! And a little bit of Jeez. There's still a lot here. Okay. Okay, I see him right there. Yeah. Baby. Why are you probably pulling that last thing? Oh, poor baby. That one's going to die. That last one. No wonder they're big. I got some big food going on. Amanda. That one is going to die, you see? Without being tight back, any clover die, you see? Uh. That's it. That's the end of it. Because the water will push you. Yeah, yeah, that he's going to the water. Oh. Yeah, going to die. You see? Yeah. The water will push you. Mm. Right into the crocodile's oh. jaws. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this one, look. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's moving. The crocodile's moving. Oh, 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 oh. right behind the bump. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's alive. Yay! Never find his mom again. Oh, yay! He ate it! Oh, Simon hears on the radio of another potential crossing. Survivors. That hyena has had a lot of good eats. You call it the circle of life. You can phrase it any which way you want, but it's still a harrowing spectacle to witness. Big respect for these survivors. When you have millions following the green, it takes a lot of crossings. 
Grim reminders of the toil it takes on the youngsters. Those babies better stay close to the mom. We move on the bumpy road and see the exhausted survivors who still have much to contend with on this side. Hyenas and no doubt lions not far behind. The importance of vultures is often overlooked because of their supposed character. Greedy, bringers of death and decay. But they play a critical role in keeping the environment clean. I do find them charismatic and interesting. Cute, even. They are nature's most successful scavengers. They are also an important part of the food web, on which all living things, including humans, depend. Let's put it this way. Think about how your neighborhood would look and smell if the garbage collectors disappeared. Vultures are in fact teetering on the brink of extinction. They have declined by 95% outside their protected areas, and human-wildlife conflict is one of the leading reasons behind the use of poison baits. Often herders use poison to retaliate against predators for killing livestock. Agrochemicals are the poison of choice, indiscriminately killing predators and scavengers. One poison carcass can lead to cascading effects, leading to multiple deaths. Each animal that is poisoned presents a risk of further predator and scavenger poisoning. See how you can help. Go to birdlife.org. The Kenyan Nile crocodile, or Nile crocodiles, the largest of the world, for a good reason, Latsa and Latsa eats. They can survive for long periods between meals. Though, when they do eat, they can eat up half their body weight at a time. When you see a hippo in a body of water, they're on their tippy toes or standing on a sandbank. Hippos sink in deep water which isn't too surprising considering males can weigh up to 7,000 pounds. Morning, breakfast time. Breakfast time with our compadres on the bank of the river before we head back to camp. In the distance, I see the wildebeest gathering, moving along in that circle of life. Never in my mind as vivid as what I witnessed today. Yep, not in my wildest dreams. And there in the distance is an image that haunts me. I saw him crawling away as he dragged his legs behind him, no doubt crushed by a jump from the high bluff, the herd mentality as they call it. They follow each other blindly to much devastation and lives. Is that the consequence of no leadership? Or the consequence of too many creatures and Mother Nature has divined a way to control it? 